Good evening, I'm Brando Bacini and I'm a real estate advisor at Leonard Luxury Real Estate. Welcome to Florence and Villa Antinori di Monte Aguglioni. We are now specifically in the beautiful hills surrounding Florence city center and we are now walking the main way to this beautiful property which we are going to see together now. Come, let's go. This is probably one of the most amazing properties we have for sale around Florence. So we are specifically just five kilometers away from the city center and you can enjoy and admire the countryside around you and the silence. The only things you will hear are gonna be the birds around you. So this villa has been owned by some of the most important and noble families in Florence. Uh, Obviously, one of the most important was the Antinori family, from where it takes its name. But there's also another uh, important uh, family which once owned this villa, which was the Giocondo family, from where a, his wife was so-called the Gioconda and known as the Mona Lisa, and that's the lady that was represented in Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting. We are now walking through the Italian gardens, which is a typical feature of every important and historical Italian villa. And standing here, you can feel the energy and the power and the beauty of this villa. So it, the villa dates back uh, to the 1400. Um, in total measures uh, 2,700 square meters and has 27 hectares of land around it. The garden also includes a very nice swimming pool and a tennis court. The rest of the land is mainly agriculture and has a very large uh, olive grove with a very good and high quality olive oil production and a five hectare vineyard which produces the typical Chianti wine. This garden was mentioned in some very important uh, gardens book and it was committed by Natalie Antinori, one of the first owners of the villa, to whom was dedicated this detail and this fountain. We have now reached the entrance of this majestic villa and see how big and powerful it is and the beauty that represents and the perfect conditions in how it stands. But before taking you in the villa, we are going to have a look where this magic fruit comes from. Ooh, I love the smell of lemon. We're going to see the lemon house. We are now standing in the Rose Garden and on our left we can see the actual lemon house. This is where the lemon plants are kept during the winter and on the right side we can also see the private chapel of the villa which is another particular feature of the important historical villas in Italy. And on top of uh, this the property also measures uh, another 1,000 square meters of building which are spread out of the land and they're mainly used for agriculture. We have now reached the main porch of the villa and which leads to the main entrance of the house and we are now going to see the inside by going through this door. And here we are. And as soon as you enter the villa, you can already feel uh, the spaces and the importance of this property. And I would just like you to have a look at a detail. Uh, apart from the height of the ceilings, 
uh, that beautiful fresco which stands up there and which in particular it represents the stemma of the noble family of the Antinori who as I said used to own this property and so let's lead from this side uh, which goes to one of the main living rooms of the villa. And this is one of the uh, main living rooms of the villa. This is one of those places where uh, you can enjoy uh, a nice evening. Uh, maybe in the winter you can switch on the fire uh, made out of this original uh, local stone and you might be sitting down here having a nice glass of red wine and in the meantime you might also appreciate and enjoy this amazing ceiling which is all wooden and hand painted. Uh, there's another very particular and nice detail which is this uh, very important piece of furniture which once used to be in a sanctuary and which has now been brought to this room and it actually matches perfectly the frescoes and the paintings on this ceiling. All, uh, so this uh, room also leads to another larger, more formal dining and entertainment area. This is a space which you can use when you have guests and you might also use this space to access the outside as it has two uh, window doors and from here you could still have your chimney on and the detail of this uh, important marble uh, in this uh, fireplace and in the same time uh, appreciate the light and again another very nice and important wooden ceiling with all details painted by hand. So this is a perfect place where to entertain your guests. So this is the ladies room and you can notice how the colors are more gentle, the materials are more soft and this is a place where the ladies after uh, the entertainment they used to come here and gather and relax maybe enjoy a cup of tea and there's a very strong symbol which represents a woman uh, which is this painting which was uh, committed by uh, General Bernadotte from the Napoleon uh, military emperor and you can receive the powerness of this painting uh, when you look at it and in the meantime uh, just next door it's where the men's used to stand and uh, as well they might have enjoyed uh, I don't know, a cigar or, a, or maybe a cigarette after dinner. They would wear a special jacket called the smoking and used to come here and uh, probably they were not having a cup of tea. They might have had a brandy or a whiskey and used to come here and chat about business and enjoy themselves. You can see the difference between this room and the other one. This one is much brighter, much bigger. It's more... Uh, a sense of power and richness. Just look at the detail of this Baroque uh, chimney. It just gives you the feeling of having so much wealth and being in control of every situation. And here we are. So this is the so-called weapons room. This is where the soldiers used to come and put down all their weapons. And 
enjoy some uh, relax after the battle or the fight. So they might have uh, sat down here and had a meal uh, to get back some strength. And they used to take advantage of this area where there's this amazing big chimney where the fire used to be always on and there was the staff was always cooking something in order to give back strength to the soldiers which have fought the battles in order to obtain control of the land around this important villa. We are now back to the main staircase, which will lead us to the sleeping area at the top floor. Okay, now let's go and see the master bedroom. So this is one of the master suites of the villa and I would like you to have a look at the ceiling where there is a beautiful painting which represents heaven. So once you were lying down on the bed, you would look up and see the angels and the sky. And it also has a very, very nice detail which I'm going to show you now. So this is the best part of this master bedroom. And here you are. This bedroom enjoys a private veranda, which has amazing windows overlooking the Italian garden. And this is a space where in the morning, just woken up, you can enjoy your petit déjeuner, have your coffee, your croissant, and at the, mean, at the same time, read a newspaper or this could be a place where also you just relax and read a book in the evenings and have your aperitif whilst enjoying the light. Even during the winter season, this could be a winter garden where you're not able to enjoy the garden, so you enjoy these spaces as if you were outside. I am now standing on the villa's rooftop terrace from where you can see and enjoy the beautiful Florentine countryside. And by standing here, you can appreciate the view. And here we are back at the entrance. I really hope you have enjoyed uh, this tour of this amazing villa. Unfortunately, I have to go away, uh, but I would really love to be able to stay here. Uh, well, this is your occasion to come and spend some time in this amazing place. I hope to see you soon. Thank you.